If you had to battle horrifying flesh-eating monsters, what would you do? The country's about to be overrun with creatures from hell, and the only way to stop them will be by disrespecting innocent dead bodies, punching crazy horse gods right in the face, and acting like our favorite little ghost hunter Yayoi from the anime Dark Gathering in order to save the world. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the Yoma Hell Demons in Blood Raid Curse of the Yoma. This man is going to watch his entire country get killed by flesh-eating monsters that wear the skins of their victims. Hikage here is an elite ninja that is about to find out the worst news of all. His best friend, Maro, has suspiciously run away, and his leader has been brutally murdered by Yoma, mythical blood-sucking creatures that feed on humans and can wear their skins to hide in plain sight. His ninja clan thinks Maro is somehow responsible for their leader's death and tell Hikage to go find him and kill him before word gets out that their leader has died. Because all hell will break loose if that happens, not realizing that hell is already at their doorstep. With no choice, Hikage sets off on an epic journey that will force him to go up against Yoma, spirits, and mythical gods, but his clan warns him of what horrors he's about to face. Japan is starting to get more attacks by the Yoma. The whole country is on red alert, but they foolishly think the problem will soon be cleared up. Setting off to kill his former best friend, Hikage soon senses trouble. Suddenly, a shuriken flies past his face. He gets attacked by ninjas like him, fighting for his life. Using his elite skills, he appears from the sky, slicing this enemy in half, throwing some grenades, setting off a massive explosion, and he runs away from more incoming trouble disappearing into this field, and he figures out his next move. Okay, as we're both honorable ninjas here, I would work on taking this guy out in the most dishonorable way possible with a game of rock tag. Let me explain. We're fighting against Iga ninjas, one of the most famous clans in Japan, known for being skilled in things basically like hit and run tactics, infiltration, disguise, guerrilla warfare, and better fighting in forests and mountains. This strength we can use against them, since we just entered a flat field and their weakness is fighting head on. And as I said, we're both honorable ninjas, so the best way to defeat him would be by being dishonorable as hell. While running, I would collect any natural items, rock from nature and hiding, before luring the ninja up close to use his sword. From here, I would use one of the rocks or hard items that I find earlier and hide it in my non-dominant hand while concealing it by pretending to hold my sheath. Assuming a battle-ready position, the enemy approaching, seeing us in this position, would expect us to perform a draw cut technique based on our stance as he charges at us. However, this is when I would throw the rock from our non-dominant hand at him last minute while using our dominant hand holding the sword to perform the draw cut maneuver he was expecting, blindsiding him with the rock first would throw him off. Our sword strike would either kill him or injure him enough in order for us to easily take him out right after. And there you go, beating a ninja in the most dishonorable way possible. He surprise attacks his final opponent, pile driving him, locking his arm and brutally breaking his neck. Out of breath, he senses something sinister approaching this old man, but something about him is off. He tells Hikage that he is a priest and has come to give him his last rites because he won't be alive for much longer, taking him to his temple. The old man starts acting shady, saying this area is where people come to transition in life. Hikage doesn't understand what he means, but he will soon find out how evil this man really is. Finding out tomorrow isn't here, he's about to leave, but the old man tells him he should rest at the nearby village because he will die if he stays out tonight. Okay, that's weird. The priest claims he somehow knows about the country's Hyoma problem and reveals Japan will not win this war and is on the verge of getting overrun because soon there will be more Yoma than human and they can do nothing but wait to die. Thinking he's crazy, he quickly leaves but senses two ninjas nearby and one unknown monster headed in different directions, making him realize there's something fishy going on in this village. But that's when he hears somebody singing nearby and runs into this girl from the village, not saying anything. She takes him to her home and he spots all the locals partying without a care in the world and she invites him to join. Hikage hesitates, but she tells him night is soon coming and he must stay. With little choice, he lets loose and is about to join the party just as he spots his former best friend and target in the middle of everything. He tries to follow him but gets stopped by this villager to keep on drinking Ranking, making him wonder if he's imagining things, not realizing that this is actually a really terrifying sign. Later that night, staying with the village girl, he tells her why he's here and finds out her name is Aya, but she tells him she's never seen someone named Maro here, since most people from this village are travelers that come and go, and she can tell that he's tense, and she tells him to relax while he's here. Another woman named Ito stops by to give him some new clothes for free, but that's when Hikage notices something strange because this village seems too good to be true, but somehow he goes to sleep. What the heck is wrong with him? and he's unaware that he's being watched. Pressed for time, the next day he starts investigating this area because he's noticed three strange things since he's arrived here. He hasn't heard or seen any animals up until now. Strange. There aren't any rice fields nearby to feed anyone, and they were just parting it up like nobody's business. And the village has been acting way too nice to him. Okay, if I was them, I would focus less on the drinking and more on the chopping off of everyone's willies right now. It makes no sense why Hikage is wasting time drinking the night away. Run the clock. If the Yoma outbreak gets worse in Japan, it will be every 
man for himself, and the one thing more dangerous than monsters in an apocalypse is man himself. If I was him, I would start thinking like a detective over a ninja, and would start by figuring out who saw Maro at any point, even if it was just one time, in order to create a timeline of when he came and left, or didn't, because right now we have no idea when our target got here, and the longer we wait, the more the locals will forget what our friend looks like, since long-term memory can also affect someone's ability to remember face details, depending on factors like how emotionally impacted they were by that person. If Maro didn't stay long and didn't interact much with anyone here, there's a higher chance that the locals' memory of him won't last long at all. However, I would go back to the priest and torture the shit out of him and get more information before killing him. At this point, the world is at stake and one or two innocent casualties in the grand scheme really won't matter. Depending on the information we get from the priest, I would then go back and get info out of the village through a simple, peaceful two-step system. Step one, start off by being friendly and vulnerable to the villagers, sharing them my deepest desires and building a bond with them before pressing them about our target and what they know. Two, if this doesn't work, I would begin chopping off everyone's willies one by one and begin slicing some people's faces and force them to spill the beans, which should happen pretty quickly since they have no reason to hold any loyalty to him. Because at this point, there is no reason to beat around the bush. Hikage is taking this way too slow for a man on a mission. Hikage realizes the same people watching him from yesterday are still watching him now. He thinks he knows them. That night in his room, he actually gets secretly called to go outside, finally meeting his stalkers, ninjas from his clan. His men question why he's still at the village, because Maro was only spotted passing through here once, and staying here longer is pointless. Hikage tells them they're wrong because he saw him yesterday, and begs them to let him stay and look a little longer, because they used to be bros. Feeling sorry for him, these two agree to give him two more days. Continuing his search, the next night he hears Aya scream in her sleep, rushing to take care of her, but more screams start coming from outside of the village, going to invest that's when he runs into the most horrifying crime scene he's ever seen, eyeing up the area full of bloody guts, strange cobwebs, and this disfigured body. No man could have done this. He realizes that these wounds weren't made by normal weapons, but something far more monstrous. Inspecting the victims, he recognizes this one from the village, and suddenly he reacts and throws his shuriken into the bush, spotting something evil escape. It must be a Yoma! Alright, so we got a lot going on right now, but really, the most important thing to do is to disrespect the crap out of this corpse. All for the sake of our mission, of course. We finally spotted a Yoma in the flesh. We should have been more alert from the moment we saw the bite marks on this victim. Because bite marks here are bigger than the biggest predator in Japan. We know the country is being infested by Yoma, so obviously I would have come more prepared than Hikage did. Showing up with at least my sword, not just some tiny small edged weapons. Ninjas in general like to wear lightweight flexible clothing with little armor to aid in speed and movement, which is fine normally. Seriously, all he has to do is to slap on a bigger sword and he would have been way better off. And this is only part of the problem. Because the village we've been investing has been acting like nothing is wrong, everything's fine, it's great, come party! This is why I would disrespect this victim's body by moving the corpse before it gets even colder back to the village immediately and finally offer proof to the villagers that something is actually going on. Because up until this point, we haven't had any evidence of what is going on and this is caused by the villagers to have plausible deniability. Bringing the corpse back like this would also help us find out two things. Depending on how the village reacts, I wouldn't know if they're certifiably crazy or if they were lying. And if they are crazy, I could then immediately stop treating them like human beings, and more like nothing more than sources of information, torturing and killing them in order to finally see if they're holding out any more information about our mission. Because at this point, Hikage has been acting way too soft, and slowly dragging out this part of the anime any longer than he needed to, and it's starting to piss me off. Another creature surprises attack Hikage, barely avoiding death. He quickly beats it up and chases it away too, spotting Maro again. But this time, it's clear as day, not realizing what's going on. This one victim barely clinging to life reveals a new piece of information about his best friend, delivering a cryptic message. He says Maro was born from the ground and is secretly pure evil and soon the monsters will revive him. Hikage here has no idea what he's talking about and he thinks he must be suffering from blood loss but that's when he tells him that his clan has known about this all along and Maro is evil. There is no way this stranger could know this information and Hikage tries to ask more questions but as we all know in anime, the dude suddenly dies. He rushes to go tell Aya about her villager friend that just died but she tells him this village is known for travelers coming and going and he's probably off traveling again. Laughing it off, Hikage thinks every Everyone here has gone insane. Aya heads inside, but secretly hears an evil voice putting her in a trance and gives her one order to carry out. Later that night, Hikage tries to sleep, but he hears the faint sound of someone singing deep in the forest, warned never to go there at night. And with Aya not here, he realizes that person singing must be her. He rushes to check on her, and that's when he spots horrifying cobwebs everywhere, blocking his vision. And he sees Aya in the distance near this monster. Raiding his weapons, he rips through the web, finally seeing what he couldn't before. Aya's guts getting fed on by this 
this terrifying Yoma. Bursting in rage, Hikage launches his shuriken, taking out his sword. He attacks, cutting off the Yoma's leg, but gets violently knocked back, lets the Yoma get away. He's useless. Ugh. Chasing after it, he comes across the same priest from earlier. Pissed off, he demands to know what's going on, but the priest tells him he's already told him what this village was, making him finally piece together the clues. This village houses the bottom losers of society and uses them for sacrifice. Shocking Hikage, he doesn't believe him. The priest tells him, their king, Kigo no Mika, was born as a human, but must be reborn again to overcome humanity and rule the world, and tells him that Hikage knows who this king is. Not listening anymore, he charges at the priest, but sees his bones starts breaking and transforms into a full-on Yoma, and the two get ready for a death match. Okay, I would use some similar tactics to take out this Yoma like Yayoi did in the sick anime Dark Gathering, baby. <laughs> Here's how we do it. Hikage is acting way too emotional right now by running straight into the monster's home turf. Don't do that. This monster is familiar with this area and would be able to surprise and overwhelm him due to his sheer size and tentacles. If I was him, I would have leveraged our mobility right now as Yayoi did in the anime Dark Gathering against the Dark Tunnel F Ghost, yeah. By luring the Yoma outside into a more open area that had less trees, reducing its ability to attack us from different angles. By luring it back to the village, we could use the environment against it. Like using the rope from the well located there, which we passed by earlier, and we could have used it to try and tie it around the Yoma's human face, and this would have severely restricted its movement and would have allowed us to approach it from behind and kill it swiftly and with way less risk. Fighting in literally any other area away from the Yoma's lair would have been better than what Hikage did just right now, acting out of pure emotion. That's not what you do, that's not what a professional does. The horrifying Yoma easily overpowers him and throws him back, shooting its webs at Hikage and it strikes at close range, but this ninja gets in a lucky shock. Shot, stabbing the Yoma in the face, bleeding out, Hikage prepares to kill it, but it tells him that if he dies, the whole village will die as well. Warning him there's no saving people who clearly don't want to be saved. The Yoma reveals the villagers came to him, and he offered to use on them something that would make them forget their traumatic past. And this monster is actually their hero? Hikage doesn't actually believe the Yoma, and so he kills him. Heading into the priest's house, he discovers this hidden entrance at the other temple within, spotting Ito covered in blood. Going to help her, she asks if the priest is alright. Just as horrifying spiderwebs start forming around him and trapping him, about to devour his flesh, she tells him they must not disturb their king. The one who gave life to all the Yoma. He's been feeding on the village to gain power and is about to wake up. Hikage asks if they ate his friend Maro, just as he deploys some explosives, blinding Ito. Changing back into a human, Hikage cautiously passes by her to inspect the temple, but she surprises him, disarming and badly injuring him. Thinking quick, he takes his hand in her face, actually pulls out her entire mouth, killing her for good. Entering this mysterious place, he calls out for the famous demon king, seeing webs everywhere. He spots this strange statue covered in blood, blowing it up. That's when he spots this pulsating rock and sees it bleed. Opening it up, he sees Maru inside. Dropping his knife in shock, he notices his best friend holding a human head. About to get him out, Maru hisses at him and sends him flying back, causing the entire area to crumble and explode around Hikage, freeing Maru, and he leaves injured Hikage behind. Behind. A few hours later, Hikage barely escapes with his life, badly hurt and still in shock. Suddenly remembering Aya, he runs to check on her, but spots her lifeless corpse. Heading back to the village, he finds the rest of the village has suffered the same fate, and he spots his ninja boss who's just arrived to deliver some more urgent news about his mission. Both clan have found out about their leader's murder. The boss tells him there's no point in finding Maro anymore and just come home. But Hikage refuses to abandon his best friend and forcibly carries on his mission alone. Two years later, he continues his search for his best friend, but hasn't found any leads for two years. What an idiot. Resting by this beach, suddenly this woman runs into him, being chased by this other ninja. He watches them battle in front of him, blamed for a crime she didn't commit. She begs this ninja to stop, but he doesn't listen. More ninjas arrive, also spotting Hikage, and they attack him, forcing him to react. He swiftly subdues this one guy, and while the girl slices this guy's neck, desperate and outnumbered, she temporarily teams up with Hikage. Okay, right now we got bigger problems. We need to focus on taking on only one of our enemies here, and use the environment behind us to our advantage. The girl dragged us into this mess and now we have to deal with it. But at this point, we're screwed since we're outnumbered. This is why I would first escape this area by pivoting sideways to limit the range of this guy's long-ranged weapons behind. One of the best ways to handle multiple attackers is to basically keep moving. Don't get surrounded. By staying mobile, I would have worked on taking down the biggest threat here, besides the leader. And it would have been by handling this lightweight guy with a long-ranged weapon. He's way faster than most of them, and more deadly since he can attack from a distance. In order to take him out while minimizing any injuries, I would lead him to the force behind them, and there would be a lot of obstructions preventing him from properly using that long-range weapon, forcing him to fight us up close and give us the advantage, and allowing us to use our sword and deal with him head-on. We're way more skilled than this guy, most likely. Once you take out the faster guy, we would have been able to move onto the bigger guy and use the cover of the forest to our advantage. What I'm saying is, guys, we need to use guerrilla warfare, fight dirty to take him out. The two fight for their lives, barely managing to take out the rest, but they do manage to injure this guy, causing him to blindly head
head into the ocean. The girl tries to stop him, but Hikage stops her, warning that something is about to happen. And suddenly a giant explosion occurs in the ocean, just as this giant horse arises. Charging straight for them, miraculously running over water, it's a Jesus horse. Interesting. Hikage realizes that this isn't an ordinary creature, and easily tramples over this guy, and he gets ready for another battle, but instead the creature stops and asks him if he's the one who killed his companions, but Hikage has no idea what he's talking about. He asks if it knows his friend Maro. Getting ignored, introduces himself as Majumi no Miko, ruler of the seas, warning him there is someone else out there that rules the land. Going over to lick these corpses, he tells him that when him and the rule of the lands unite, all of the yom in the world will be revived. Hikage can tell this thing knows Maru and demands to spill the beans, but Majumi reveals that Hikage already knows who Maru really is, pisses him off even more, and he attacks Majumi. But uh, that was a bad move. The creature easily knocks him back, throws him into the sea, helplessly, and he gets ready to kill him. Okay, yeah, we're definitely gonna be screwed. So I guess the only thing we can do is to stop this freaking overpowered horse by acting like Mike Tyson. Let me explain. Hikage made the criminal mistake of being too near the water and is now deep within enemy's territory. Literally. Assuming we're not the chosen ninja and just a regular old non-anime protagonist, we need to be way more careful because right now we can't beat this thing, at least not right now. Our best bet is to treat this monster like a freaking pesky old shark. Getting back to land is our best bet right now, but swimming there is going to take a lot of energy. So right now we need to brutally disable this monster before we even try to leave. Since we already have no weapons, I would simply go for this monster's face and eyes because there is a proven weak point for sharks. This would likely produce the same result for this horse creature. Since the nose is for horses plays a much bigger part for them than it does for humans. It's much more sensitive to the touch and that would likely be the case here. By blinding it temporarily, it would have allowed us to head back to land before plotting our next move because trying to fight a water predator in water as a human is about the craziest thing I've ever heard of and I've watched a lot of anime and I do it for a living. This is pretty crazy. Thinking fast, Hikage dodges Majumi's underwater attack but quickly gets countered, getting dragged deeper and deeper underwater, forcing his eardrums to burst in pain. Desperate, he punches Majumi straight in the mouth, killing him, allowing him to escape to the surface. Deep underground, another evil minion of the ocean, Shiratsuyu, updates his boss, Maru, that Majumi no Miko has died by someone named Hikage. Their plans to revive the ocean Yomas will be delayed. Pissed off, he orders Shiratsuyu to go down and hunt Hikage so this doesn't happen again. But uh, back on the beach, Hikage finally returns, badly wounded, and sees the ninja girl from earlier, and thinking she's safe, he tries to leave, but uh, she follows him. Looking for some shelter, Hikage comes across his eerie village. Cleaning himself off, the ninja woman introduces herself as Aya, the same name as the last woman. What the frick? This is creeping me out and Hikage out at the same time. This is spooky. Wanting to repay him, she offers to ask this village if they can stay the night. Approaching this one house, she spots a woman inside holding a baby. Trying to make a conversation, Aya can sense something isn't right, and the woman asks her if she wants to hold her baby. And that's when Hikage hears her scream, running to save her, and spots her in shock. Looking at this baby without a head, more zombie villagers start coming out, but harmlessly walk past them instead, making Hikage finally realize what's going on. All of these villagers, all of them, are already dead. They've just been walking right in the middle of the procession, the dead still attached to this world. The illusion of a peaceful village disappears, letting them see what this place really looks like. Human corpses everywhere. But Hikage thinks this was caused by a war. If that's the case, then the village would have been burned, making him think the Yoma are behind this, indicating they're getting closer to finding them. And possibly Maro as well, updating Aya on the mission as they make camp. The next morning, Aya wakes up and finds Hikage has left her. <gasps> oh no, my lover boy! Chasing after him, she spots a spirit appear right in front of her, telling her that she was slain by her lover, but she still wants him and is looking for him in this area, but Aya doesn't realize what kind of monster this lover really is. And that's when these branches burst from the ground and she gets caught in another Yoma attack. Nearby, Hikage continues on his journey but spots this monster in the tree. Getting hit with some smoke, he gets knocked down, not realizing that he's just run to Shiratsuyu. Attacking Hikage, he barely dodges the strike, stabs the monster in the chest last minute, and he thinks, ooh, it's over. But suddenly the ground beneath him bursts and it comes out as this giant snake. Catching Hikage off guard, he gets grabbed by these tentacles, finding out that Shiratsuyu is still alive. And now that he's about to die, he fires these darts and escapes somehow this creature's grip. Thinking it's over, he spots Aya and this ghost spirit held hostage. Rushing to save them, and he scales this tree and he deploys tactical bombs at the tree monster. While the snake tries to reach him, Aya nearly dies, hanging on for dear life. Hikage is forced up this tree, trapped on the last branch, and is about to die again. Aya's friendly spirit from earlier transforms into this cloud and charges at Hikage. The snake recognizes the girl's spirit as his ex-lover and tells her to stay back, baby. But she enters his body and causes his body to burn and disappear. Hell 
Will hath no fury like a woman scorned. After, Hikage gives Aya shit for putting him through this side quest, but she makes him feel better by confessing her feelings for him and yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, they're now getting closer to finding the main Yoma nest. Suddenly they run into a familiar face and Hikage knows him, a ninja named Kazumi. He tries to attack him, declaring he's here to take his life, confusing Hikage while he fights for his life. Kazumi reveals that their lord made a deal with the Yoma to borrow their power, to help them become the strongest clan in Japan. It makes Hikage realize that Maro is in fact the evil demon king of the Yoma. Kazumi says they made a deal with Maro to gain Yoma powers, but now they want them to kill Hikage too. With no choice, Hikage strikes him. Realizing his teammate is holding back his power, he reveals to him that he can't be an outcast like Hikage and lives to follow rules. Letting Hikage fatally injure him, he doesn't want to kill him, but tells him the Yoma are controlling his entire clan and are located nearby in a place called Nagashino. Hikage is forced to put his teammate out of his misery and he says goodbye to the ninja clan that raised him. Now he goes full Lone Ranger or Lone Wolf, whatever you prefer, and he prepares to go head to where Kazumi came from, Nagashino. Suiting up, he tells Aya to stay behind, but she begs him to let her come, but he ignores her like a stud and starts his journey. Traveling, he soon reaches Nagashino, but starts seeing hundreds of dead bodies. Sensing Yoma near him, he announces he's come for Maro. Just then, the ground breaks under him, forcing him to react in self-defense, rocks exploding near him, forcing him to gain some distance and prepares for battle, spotting Yomas surrounding him. But that's when he runs into Maro. Looking for answers, he asks his best friend why did he turn into this evil king? But Maro tells him that he grew up tired of living life under strict ninja rules and thinks there's more to life than that. And he tells Hikage's shocked face that the ninjas have followed their orders their entire lives. It's a stupid concept. And they deserve to die along with the rest of the world. But he wants to spare Hikage and make him join his side, considering it. But that's when he spots Aya in the distance and realizes that she's followed him and is about to die. Calling out for Hikage Kage, she snaps him out of Maro's evil trance, making him reject Maro's offer and pisses him off, and he finally transforms in his true evil form. This monster! Maro declares that he will feast on his blood, and suddenly a lightning strike occurs nearby as the ruler of the sea, Majumi, returns, and he's still alive. It charges at Maro. Hikage realizes that if these two unite, the end of the world will happen. Aya tries to stop Majumi, but easily gets her face crushed. Pissing Hikage off, Maro and Majumi finally merge into this terrifying monster, revealing to Hikage that he is the final sacrifice needed to revive the Yoma army. Not wasting any time, they head straight for Hikage, knocking him back into this rock. Beat the shit out of him. All right, I would try to kill Maro by utilizing his greatest weakness, our neurochemical relationship. For stoic ninja, Hikage hasn't been acting too ninja-like and is way too emotional. Thinking he could charge in and stop a god-like warrior by just saying, hey, I'm gonna beat him up? That's dumb. If I was Hikage, I would have played it smarter by trying to figure out every advantage we could get, for starters, by not rushing in, and instead would have camped out nearby to watch Maro's movement. To pick up any other clues we could use. And also, we gotta recognize that Maro used to be our best friend, which is a huge deal that we could have capitalized on because connecting with someone on a close level, platonic or romantic, it releases a powerful cocktail of your body's feel-good hormones. And this makes your brain's reward circuitry want you to do this again and again, and this doesn't easily go away with someone. And this is why I would try to leverage any potential emotional vulnerabilities that Maro might have for us. This would include making him reminisce about our old bro days, buying time when we try to close the distance and make a Hail Mary last attempt attack at him at close range because that's all that we got at this point. Telling Hikage that the Yoma were created from humanity's hatred, fear, and prejudice, and that they deserve what's coming to them. Maro pushes Hikage back onto this cliff and he hangs for dear life, transforming into an even bigger demon. But Hikage proudly tells him that he will live on his terms and will not bow down to anyone. Pissing Maro off, he grabs Hikage a final time, brutally slams him against this rock, and the little energy left, Hikage slices his eyes, barely evading his death, and uses this moment to slice Maro's stomach, critically injuring him and forces him to go back to his first form. On the verge of death and delirious, Maro calls out to Hikage as both of them collapse, and the entire area starts to crumble around them and turns back into a peaceful forest. Later, Hikage wakes up and realizes, hey, I'm saved by my boo. Realizing her selfless act, he finally shows her some love. With no home to go back to, the two start traveling freely, but that's when they come across a dead woman and her newborn son. Ai goes to rescue the baby, while Hikage remembers what Maro told him and wonders if he made a mistake by staying human. Not realizing that Maro, deep in the underworld, is about to be reborn. But what did you think about the video? What would you do different? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to check out our How To Be playlist.